Welcome back guys. In the previous video we have laid the foundation for our app and created the admin panel. And now it's time to start working on the front end. Now being lazy as I am, I propose we use Twitter Bootstrap again. But before we do, we need a way to check our progression in the browser. And the current homepage still throws a massive 404. So let's fix that by opening up the rouse file in the config folder. Let's make it so that the page is the default controller. That way, when a visitor visits the home page, he will be routed to that page controller. Okay, and that will do for now. Next, open up the page controller and let's load a view file. We'll call it an underscore main underscore layout. Of course, we'll need to create that file. It will live in the views folder and this is where we'll set up our styling. Now, as we go along, I'll be bringing in stuff from admin views if we can reuse them. But let's just start by creating a basic HTML5 page and see if we can actually view this in the browser. So we'll just do a simple hello Chuck here and see if that works. Okay, well at least we're getting output here. Now let's go back and set up our layout much like we did in the admin section. So we'll create a components folder and inside of that folder we'll create a page head view and a page tail view. Okay, now let's make sure we load those view files within our layout. So we'll just open that up and load the page head here and we'll just load the page tail here. Time to open up the admin page head. Let's just copy what's inside and paste it into the sites page head. Now we will have to do some cleaning up. We will have to set the meta title later on, so let's not forget. Now let's replace admin.css with styles.css and let's just create that file as well. It will live in the public HTML CSS folder. Okay, time to move on. Now we won't be needing date picker files, so let's just delete those references. And the same goes for our sortable plugin. Also, we can remove the entire tiny MCE section here. Now I think we set a site name in our CMS config file, so let's just use that instead of meta title. Well, that already looks much better. Now let's do a little check in the browser. Looks like Codeigniter can't locate our view. Let's check. Oh yes, I should have passed the components folder here. And the same goes for the footer. Also, let's just remove these HTML tags here, or we'll have them double. And check one more time. Good. Now we'll just move the closing tag to its view component, and we're ready to move on. Now create a section to hold our site name. We'll wrap it in h1 tags, and it will just be the site name we got from config again. Let's just have a look. And yeah, that looks good. Now let's create a navbar, Twitter bootstrap style. We'll create a div with a class of navbar and one with the class of navbar inner and one with the class bar of container. Inside of the container we'll create a ul with the class of nav and a list item with a link inside. Now let's add some bogus text and duplicate the list item just a couple of times. Okay, check in the browser. Okay, now let's get ready to create a drop down list for our nested pages. Now, this is not as easy as you might like, but okay. The list item that will contain the dropdown, let's say it's the first item, that needs a class of dropdown. Then the link in that list item needs a class of dropdown toggle and a data toggle attribute with a value of dropdown. And finally, you'll need to add a bold tag with a class of caret after the link text to display an arrow, which will indicate that we have a dropdown in the first place. Now let's just check to see how that looks, and that looks good. So it's time to insert a nested list here. That will be an unordered list with a class of drop-down menu. And then that can have some list items attached to it, so let's just copy and duplicate them. And let's just check that in the browser as well. Now this drop-down menu works, but only if the item is clicked, and you would expect it to drop down on hover. But that can easily be fixed by adding some CSS. So let's just go to styles.css and add a rule here. Okay, we'll need quite a complicated selector here. We are looking for a UL with a class of nav. Its child is a list item of a, with a class of dropdown. And we need to hover it. 
then inside of that will be the second ul and that will have a class of drop down menu so actually we're targeting the second ul but only if the list item above that is hovered and then we'll just say display to block and that should do the trick so let's just check that in the browser and yeah now it opens on hover very good time to set up the rest of the page we'll add a div with a class of container and another div with a class of row as a child and inside of that row we'll add two divs one with a class of span 9 which will contain our main content and one with a class of span 3 which will contain our sidebar now let's just add some comments so we won't forget main column and a sidebar now let's add some placeholder content for the main content area uh, just a title will do here and in the sidebar we'll be adding recent news item in just a bit just a final check in the browser and that could do with just a little more tweaking let's just wrap the site name and navbar in a container so they will be fixed within the page let's just check that in the browser and yeah that looks good enough to me so we set a basic styling for our front end in the next video we'll fetch the navigation from the database and bring it into the layout